Hello everyone, good morning, afternoon, and evening. My name is Hongling Chen. I am a master's student in University of Toronto. Today I will present Color Decomposition of a Spectral Coarsening, a joint work by Derek Liu, Alec Jacobson, and David Levering of University of Toronto. Discrete operators are everywhere in computer graphics, and one of their key properties is the spectral properties, namely the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. However, when defined on a high resolution domain, those matrices and their spectral properties are computationally expensive to use. Coarsening one solution to this problem has become an extensively studied topic in computer graphics with the aims of preserving different geometric and physical properties under designation. For example, in geometry processing, we are interested in how we can simplify a shape to preserve its appearance. And in physics-based simulation, we can homogenize a shape while capture its physical properties and behaviors. Coarsening is also a popular subject in some other communities, such as machine learning, where people study graph reduction while preserving its spectral properties. Recent research shows that it's possible to simplify a discrete operator while preserving its spectral properties. State of the art is Liu and colleagues' work in 2019 on spectral coarsening, and Les Goss and colleagues' work in 2020 on spectral simplification. The closest one to our work is Liu and colleagues' work in 2019. However, their work has no sparsity control of the coarsening matrix and results in a denser operator. In contrast, our method allows the user to freely control the sparsity pattern. Moreover, their method uses a non-convex formulation as their gradient descent may not converge to the global optimum, whereas our method successfully formulates the problem as a convex optimization. So why sparsity control is so important? On the one hand, a sparser matrix means less computation cost, and thus it's faster. On the other hand, a denser matrix has more degrees of freedom and may better preserve the spectral properties. Our sparsity control allows for a trade-off between the spectral accuracy of the operator and the cost of its application. In this video, we will talk about spectral coarsening, which enables us to significantly reduce the size of a discrete operator while preserving the spectral properties at the lowest frequency. Then the question comes, how can we measure the spectral similarity between two operators of different sizes? The state of the art minimizes the commutative energy, which can be understood as follows. Intuitively, if the coarsen operator X preserves the spectral properties of the original operator L, then given some functions phi on the original domain, first applying the operator L and then restricting the functions to the coarsen domain while R, Shift the same as first restricting the functions while R, and then applying the cursor operator X. Finally, because the operator we consider here are usually defined on some irregular domain, such as on a triangle mesh, we also need to waste the formulation by their mass matrices. When phi are the eigenfunction, we can prove that minimizing the commutative energy also preserves the eigenvalues. Because discrete operators, like Laplacian, also have some other properties. For example, the matrix needs to be sparse and symmetric positive semi definite, so we also add those two constraints here. If we write it into the form of an optimization problem, then we have the commutative energy as our energy function and two constraints. One is that the coarsen operator must be positive semi definite. The other is that the coarsen operator must have a specific sparsity pattern. The sparsity pattern E can be any arbitrary symmetry sparsity pattern. It can encode your surface or volumetric mesh connectivity, graph connectivity, or even some other random connectivity. However, it's tricky to satisfy both the PSD constraint and the sparsity constraint at once. Suppose we want to project a sparse matrix with an arbitrary sparsity pattern to positive semi-definite. The standard way of doing this is to count all the negative eigenvalues to zero. However, because the eigenvectors are dense, the resulting matrix after the PSD projection will also be dense. If then we want to project the dense PSD matrix back to its sparsity pattern again, the resulting matrix may not be positive semi-definite. So how do we project a matrix 
We send arbitrary sparse dependent to policy semi definite while maintaining its sparse dependent. The answer to this is color decomposition. Typically, the sparse dependent of a matrix can be represented by a graph. And the color graph is a special graph because it can be easily decomposed into smaller graphs. So, what's a color graph? A graph is a color if every cycle of length greater than 3 has a color. Because we can easily decompose a color graph into a set of smaller graphs, we can use color decomposition to split a large sparse PSD constraint into multiple small dense PSD constraints. Here, each small matrix is a dense matrix, and their PSD projection can be easily parallelized. So let's look at our optimization problem again. Using the color decomposition, we can now decompose our large sparse PSD constraint into several small ones, which are cheaper and parallelizable. However, not every graph is a color graph, but we can always add new edges to make a non color graph color. In terms of matrix, this is equivalent to adding non zero entries or degrees of freedom into the original sparsity pattern. But what we want is the original sparsity pattern. However, we can always add equality constraint to enforce the new degrees of freedom arising from extension to be zeros. Here we show some examples of the sparsity pattern change before and after the color extension. Although the color extension is NP hard, some heuristic based method works well. Let's look at our optimization problem again. For any symmetry sparsity pattern E, we can use color extension to extend it to a color sparsity pattern and add zero constraint to enforce the new degree of freedom to zero. Our zero constraint enforces that at a particular new viewing entries, the sum of the projected dense matrix must equal zero. Not that each dense matrix must contribute a zero value to the entry. This is a convex optimization problem because the energy function is contracting and thus convex. With a change of variable, the color sparsity pattern constraint can be formulated as only using the non zero entries in X as the optimization variables. The next two constraints are both linear constraints, and the final PSD constraint makes the problem become a semi definite programming problem, which, is, which belongs to the convex optimization. To recap, we formulate the spectral coarsening problem into a convex optimization, where we use color decomposition to decompose a large sparse PSD constraint into several small ones. Then we efficiently optimize the problem using ADNN or the alternating direction method of multipliers. In ADMN, we iteratively optimize the global variable x and the local variable zi. Each global update is a single linear subform x and can be precomputed. And each local update is a set of small PSD projection and can be parallelized. Finally, let's look at our results. In order to measure how well the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues in the high-resolution domain are maintained by its coarser counterpart, we visualize the functional maps from Liu 2019. The optimal functional map should be a diagonal matrix with 1 and minus 1 on its diagonal, which we visualize as red and blue. We also show the Laplacian commutative norms and the orthogonality norm proposed by Lascaux and colleagues to quantify the spectral preservation. The smaller the two norms are, the better the spectral preservation is. Using the sense during sparsity pattern, our convex formulation enabled the ADMN solver to converge to a better result on shape where the greater descent in Leo 2019 may struggle to converge. We can see that our functional map is more diagonal. Our master can also work on volumetric Laplacian. Here we see that our functional map is more diagonal and our eigenvalues are closer to the ground truth. Our method can also handle anisotropy operators where the standard simplification scheme may fail entirely due to the anisotropy. Our optimization scheme enables users to freely choose between the one ring and three ring sparsity pattern. In contrast, new 2019 has much less sparsity control on sparsity pattern and only allows for three ring sparsity pattern which introduces a significant amount of viewings. With sparsity control at hand, 
We can balance between the spectral accuracy of the operator and the cost of its application. Increasing the non-zeros in the sparsity pattern will allow for more degrees of freedom, which enables our solver to converge to a better result. We also visualize the Bahamian distance of our method and the standard simplification scheme using the same varying sparsity pattern. We can see that the pyhomenial distance of our method is closer to the ground truth. We also show that the runtime of our algorithm compared to Luan Collins' work in 2019 used the cell steering sparsity pattern. Here, the x axis is the number of vertices in the Corson operator, and the y axis is the soft time, bettering out the precomputation for both methods. We can show that our ADMS solver is able to portion a high-resolution operator efficiently while the gradient descent in Leo 2019 takes longer to converge. Since in our formulation, the linear solving ADMM is independent of the resolution of the original mesh. Our approach could further improve the results from spectral simplification while post-processing. Here, our bihominial distance is closer than Lasko and colleagues' work in 2020 using the same wiring sparsity pattern. When the coarsening is aggressive, our method can still post-process the results of Lasko and colleagues to improve the quality of the spectral preservation. Here, we show more examples of our improvements across different resolution of the coarse mesh. Our sparsity control also enables novel applications we show that our approach can optimize the Laplacian of a surface-only mesh with random distant connections to approximate the spectral behavior of a volumetric mesh. Here, the edit links are visualized as the gray lines in the right. Our modified surface Laplacian is sparse and with a controllable sparsity pattern, while the, while the corresponding matrix has been dense in the traditional boundary element method. Here is the 2D illustration of our method. Taking the boundary surface mesh of a volumetric mesh as the input, we use the constraint delaunay tetrahedralization integrant to add visible but distant edges. We are adding any new vertices. Then we use the, its connectivity as the sparsity pattern of our modified surface Laplacian. Here we visualize the bahamian distance of our optimized surface Laplacian where the source vertices are visualized as the green dots in the back. We can see that our bihominial distance is much closer to the volumetric work than the surface Laplacian. We also visualize the functional maps and the sparsity patterns of our optimized surface Laplacian. Here we show one more example of our volume to surface approximation. We show that we can further capture the volumetric behavior by increasing the rings of neighborhoods. Our approach enables users to have one mesh for visualization and one detached operator for computation. For example, we can approximate the vibration modes of a ground truth high resolution mesh using a coarse mesh with only 250 vertices, which is visualized as a transparent cage on the top right corner. Here we visualize the error using the red color. The standard simplification scheme, which is aiming to preserve the appearance, fails to preserve the spectral properties. We use the same coarse mesh obtained by the standard simplification scheme, and thus optimize the operator to preserve its spectral properties. Now we can have both an appearance preserving coarse mesh tailor made for visualization and collision detection, and a spectral preserving operator optimized for computation. Looking forward, there are still many interesting future works to do. First, jointly optimizing the sparsity pattern and the operator entries may lead to even final solutions. It will also be interesting to explore different regularizer and energy formulation to avoid introduce additional low frequency eigenvectors. Inco incorporating a fast eigen approximation or removing the use of eigen decomposition will further accelerate the spectral coarsening. Adding a preconditional could make our ADMN solver more robust to scaling problem. Finally, it will be also interesting to extend our method to many other applications beyond geometry processing, including physics-based simulation, topology optimization, algebraic multigrid, and the spectral graph reduction. Finally, we would like to thank the following founding agencies, 
and thank you for your time.